What's going on you guys? JTPrecisionStriking.com Today we're gonna get into the step off. We're gonna break it down. Also known as the L step or the V step. We're gonna get into when you would use it or why you would use it, who it's for, in what situations. And then we're gonna get into the actual technical breakdown, how to do it so that you actually know how to do it and can apply it in your own boxing. And we're also gonna go over some variations that you can to mix it in so you have those variations ready for you. We're gonna break it down pretty thoroughly coming up right now. Okay, so first thing, let's just take a look at it. Here I am moving with my boxing. I work it, step off. Okay, I'm moving in my footwork, combos, and I step off. Right here I am moving and then step off. Okay, number of situations and ways I can use it. Essentially what you're doing is moving back, moving to the side, resetting. I'm moving back, moving lateral, resetting. That's all it is. First thing I wanna say about this step off is that it's basic boxing. It really is, it's basic footwork. It's, for anybody who's been in the gym, maybe three months, six months, you should kinda know it. And if you don't know it, somehow you gotta try to pick it up from your coach or from somebody. It's not a special technique, it's not advanced. It's not for just certain types of fighters or other types of fighters. It's basic fundamental boxing. There's nothing special about it. Okay, what's it used for? For the most part, 80% of the time, 90% of the time, it is used to disengage. Although there are some situations where you're gonna use it to not necessarily apply pressure, but to set yourself up to apply pressure. But it's primarily used to disengage. If I'm in front of my opponent, what my opponent would love is if I stood still and didn't go anywhere. Check out this bag, right? I go, it doesn't, it doesn't move back, it doesn't move laterally. If all of a sudden I started to go at this bag and it started to move away from me, I would have another problem. I would now have to adjust my punching to accommodate for it moving away from me. If the bag all of a sudden moved away from me and then moved to the right, now I have two problems. I gotta adjust distance this way and then I gotta adjust distance laterally. So when you move back and retreat from an attacking opponent, they have to adjust to that distance. When you move back and then laterally, they have to adjust to both. So you create two problems for an attacking opponent. In this way, you are disengaging from the attack or forcing your opponent to reset. So let me break down two examples for you. I'm in front of my opponent, I'm moving. They are a pressure fighter for the most part. A pressure fighter wants you to stand still. They want to come in straight towards you. They have to get to a place where they can attack from. If they're way out here, they're not going to attack me. I'm moving, okay? They finally get to the spot where they want to be and where they can attack from. Boom. I work a little step off. What happens to them? Oh, damn. Now they got to adjust. I've reset them mentally. So this is a nice way that if, let's say you are winning the round at range or you're an outside fighter and the pressure fighter is getting to their place that they want to be and then you work it, okay, and you reset the distance and you reset the alignment. You're no longer right in front of them, standing still. Maybe you're moving to the left, boom, or you're moving to the right with little steps and you pick it up, okay, and you work a little step off. So number one, this is excellent for resetting your opponent especially if they're a pressure opponent. Okay, number two, creating space and moving lateral. You have to understand that a punch has an acceleration point, a peak acceleration point. If I know where the target is going to be or I know where the target is, that's where I want my acceleration to be. If I can disengage from that, I can take a little bit off the shot. Doesn't mean the opponent can't hit me. It just means that they have to adjust now to where they think I'm going or where they think I'm gonna be. They now have to, have to adjust to my movement. They can still hit me, but I'm no longer just going to be right there. Some variations. I want to disengage. I'm in front of my opponent. They attack. Even if I just do this, which is the first part of the technique, I'm already moving away from the attack. Have my hands up here, okay? And I step over and reset. Just by working it, you're taking a little bit off the shot. But a variation most of the time is this. I take that back foot, I drop weight onto it. Here, I'm moving. Okay, and that little bit combined with that, and here, and here, 
takes even more off the shot. So this is one way to nullify an attack once the opponent launches. You're moving around, you're working your jab and your combos, okay, controlling distance. As soon as you see them go, okay, you work it. You can nullify their attack, all right, with that little step off and moving lateral. Excellent fight, you just saw it recently. Bivol versus Canelo. You see Bivol use it multiple times in every round, all over the place, working it, working the little step off from range. That's just a simple recent example right there, but it's basic boxing. You can find it all over the place. So we have a couple examples of using it as the outside fighter to reset the pressure fighter and to nullify the attack. How do you use it as a pressure fighter? Well, it's always better for me as a pressure fighter if I'm away from this straight line of fire, if I can somehow get myself here, or if I can somehow get myself here, or if I can somehow get myself here. What I want the pressure fighter, the long range fighter to do is not be sure what distance I'm coming from and where I'm going to be. So one way you use this little step off, let's say I'm in front of the long range fighter, they would love to be popping that jab in my face and making me work, right? And if you're a solid fighter like Canelo, you can use this high guard, right, very effectively, like you used against Kovalev, not so effectively against Bivol. It depends on who you're facing. But if I can get myself a little bit closer, now it's not going to take as much effort or it's going to be a little bit quicker and more explosive to attack. So what do I do? From here, I'm in my stance. I'm moving. And what I do is watch. See this distance here? I step off. And when I take this foot, I put it here. I slice and reset here. And now watch, I'm closer. Okay, before I was out here, now I'm right here. So what I wanna do is I wanna cut a little bit off the perimeter, right? So instead of moving here, right, I'm gonna go here. Bang, right? When you do that, you have to know that you've suddenly gotten into the line of fire. So often what I like to do, what I've done, what a lot of fighters do is once you step off, once you get into that range, you start moving your head so that they don't time you coming into the zone, coming into that circle. You're here moving. Okay, hands are up. And then you move your head once you get into that perimeter, once you get into that zone. So you can see how here I work it. I step, reset, and now I'm a little bit closer. So as a pressure fighter, I can use it that way. Another way I can use it is if I have a fighter moving to the left and I wanna cut them off here, okay? I'm moving, I'm moving, and then I get closer and I cut them off. So these are a couple ways that you can use it tactically as a pressure fighter. We've gone over the when and why of this technique, of this tactic. Let's go over the details of the actual technique itself and break it down so that you can work on it at home and integrate it into your boxing if you don't know it already, okay? You're in your stance. From here, the first variation is the most basic. You're going to switch your feet. And I'll do it in slow motion. When you do it slow, it's kind of different from the way it works fast, but we'll start slow. This front leg is gonna replace where this rear leg is. It doesn't have to go all the way back here, right? But let's say, two thirds of the way here. Now, the balance is on that front foot. So you're switching your balance from center to front foot. This other foot, this right leg, is gonna now step out and then you're going to reset. Now, when you do it fast, it doesn't look like that. Your feet will be more grounded and they won't come together so much because they'll all work together. So when I go fast, I switch and then I'm here and I work it here, here, okay, and that's if I want to stay equidistant. All I do is replace, I reset that foot, I reset in. Now, if I want more space, more distance, I want to disengage, I take space with that back foot first. All I do is just relax back and I go into one flow, okay, one continuous flow. If I want space, I take that back. Now, remember, like I said earlier in the lesson, this is just forward and backward motion combined with lateral motion and a reset. It's basic boxing parts all put together in a sequence. What if I want more space? 
I go back two, one, two, and then I reset, right? So I can create space. I don't want to go all the way back to the ropes and get stuck there. So as I'm creating space, I switch. Let's say my opponent is really coming at me. Maybe I don't want to go back and just take one step. Well, I go back, I take two, and then I reset. Here, let me show you so maybe you guys can see it. I go back, and then I take two lateral motions. Back, one, two, three. So maybe you can use it to create space and then to move more laterally to get away from an attack. I'm a pressure fighter and I want to be able to close the distance. I'm not using this like this to close distance. I'm using it to get to a place where it's easier to close distance from. I want to get into that perimeter. I want to get into my zone. I want to get inside that reach. I work it, I step, and I cut this leg here. Okay, not here, not here. I cut it in. And now I have to know that once I'm stepping this lead leg in, I'm getting into the danger zone, so I better be ready. Once I get there, I move my head, or I cover, or once I get there, I go in and start to work my attack. And you have to be ready for that. Here. And you start to work it. Okay? All right, you start to work from there. Step off. And you use it to go. So those are some ways you can work it, some variations to create distance and adjust range. Step off, L step, B step, whatever you want to call it. Technique is still the same basic boxing footwork. It is basic boxing. It's nothing crazy, nothing special, but you got to work on it. You got to learn it. You got to know why and when to use it and what it's going to do for you. And then you can use that. It's not just some footwork trick. It all has a purpose. It all has a purpose depending on your style and, and, and your tactics and what you're trying to do in the moment. Once you know that, you can see how it fits in to the bigger picture of what you're doing. Any questions, comments, make sure to leave those below. If you enjoy this lesson, you are definitely gonna enjoy the membership on this channel. That is the join button on the channel. Link is in the video description below. Five levels, level one, all my past live streams with drills. Drills, you can do the workouts on your own or you can just take the drills and do them in your own training. Level two, workouts, instructional videos, some of my older videos that are no longer available. Level three, you're a complete beginner and you want instruction broken down detail for detail. That's the Beginner's Boxers Portal. Level three, I got a whole series of lessons and workouts to go with it. You have not seen this much boxing content anywhere. Level four, boxing training camps. You already know what you're doing, but you wanna ramp up hand speed, footwork, counter punching, tactics, conditioning, that's boxing training camps level four. Level five, you've been boxing for a while, but you want a second set of eyes on your technique and your tactics, you want an opinion, send me a video. I'll give you my review, my best opinion on what you can work on. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. In the meantime, keep your hands up, chin down, eyes on the prize. Peace.